Welcome back to Science with Greg. Today we're going to be reviewing the cheapest and smallest mini lathe on eBay and possibly the internet. Let's go. So we've had this for many months and you know you're a real YouTuber when you've got packages just laying around. You're such a busy person that you take ages to get to it. Not really done much research. I saw it was 25 pounds and just got it because I was like, that's cool as hell. And it's probably going to be a piece of so it comes with tools. Tools. <laughs> that is even smaller than I expected. It doesn't even take up the full length of the package. Looks kind of alright actually. As far as production quality. Looks kind of cool. The motor, fully exposed. We like that. <laughs> and uh, that's the adapter, because it's just um, one of those 9 volt. Kind of like a laptop charger, I guess. Got, it's got that bit, which is weirdly very, very light. And it's got... Cool. Oh, that's so cool! That's super useful. It's all of the different, like, from 12 volts, 15 volts, 16 volt. And it's got lights. That's going to be useful for other projects. It is, that's my point, yeah. And that's how you control the speed. So, that's quite a clever way of doing it. This is something we've wanted for ages. Whoa. It's also way easier to blow up your little devices. No way that I can see to clamp it down. Are you satisfied? Not really. Little twiddlies. I guess that's how you move it along. The knickknacks. The, kn the knickknacks. Some Allen keys. Oh, a chuck. Doesn't that... Yeah. That's dubstep it. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna definitely sample that. The hole doesn't do anything, but it just holds you in place so that the threads contact yeah. each other. So that's the absolute widest it can go. Jesus it's Christ. not a very big hole. I was planning on turning like things like this, because I thought it would just be a headstock, like the spice. This is a drill bit that I can just put in there and use it as a headstock. Yeah. They, they haven't given us a tool to do anything with no, it. No, no, but the, the, these bolts are square. Yeah. So these bolts, when they're in there, they can't move. But they do, is what I'm saying. No, no, this housing keeps it straight. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. Yeah. It's very fiddly, this. Quite annoying. Look at that. What are we turning? Because we need to know the... Uh, a toothpick. We've got either this. What do you think is better for holding things? Probably that's sharp. It's sharp as well. Some slow push. It turns into this with all the cool like colours. Where? Right. Even on this scale, the tiniest bend is going to make a huge difference. Not even that perfect. <laughs> a little thing for that, that point to sit in. That is the perfect center on this perfect circle. See so now it can sit a little bit nicer. Same problem we had before. Oh there's a nut that's... Like, oh oh cross. Oh no. It's fine. No you're never gonna get that out. Yeah but does that screw go down deep enough to pick it up? <laughs> <laughs> So this is the tool rest, that your tool sits on there as it goes into there, but for the real lathe, this is what it should look like. That little thing there is... That. Usually I'm working on this scale. Jesus, what? Yeah, it's very long, but like the actual head is not that significant. Yeah. So this was £250, and this is £25. There is... a hundred times different... 10. 10 times different. <laughs> I, I, I just... Looking, help me. <laughs> <laughs> we've got... Oh yeah, we've got this one, which is this one. That's good. <laughs> the skew chisel. It's a perfect V, which is hilarious because it should be like a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit better. Spindle guard or something. Or rough and guard. That's a proper skew because it's actually skewed instead of being flat on the front. The uh, old faithful. <laughs> It, it will, I never use it. We'll rough it first with the cow. No, that's the lowest power. Okay. No, it's still tight. It's just uh, untightened itself, so we need to move this up. Okay. It's a joke's wonderful idea. 
here is to, instead of use this, we're going to use the normal crosshead drill bit of the actual drill in the chuck here and have an actual screw in the wood and they connect because that's just a perfect fit there. The only other thing that I could think of that comes from normal turning is a woodworm screw where the chuck holds this piece here, either there or there. You can see it's dovetailed so it's very secure. And then you drill a small hole and then just turn that onto the piece so that that becomes one uh, and it's got that screw on the inside. and I'm not sure why, but it's actually working quite well. It is. I imagine we'll get blunt very quick, but it hasn't done a terrible job. Like, in fact, it's gotten pretty already. Hang on, wait, wait. Let's try a different tool. Let's go for the skew, which I have a feeling is gonna snap pretty quickly. The notch they've left in this tool rest where the screw goes in does not go in anywhere near far enough. I'd like the tool rest to be like here. Yeah. Because if you leave a huge gap there, that just allows the tool to snap. I want to be doing something like that and yeah. have the wood super close. I, can, I, I say full power. Have we even tried it on full power no. with something in it? How <laughs> 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 was I doing so well before? Whoa, look at it. Wait, did you bend it? A little bit, yeah. Let's try again. But if you use decent tools, I mean these are not exactly great, but they they work. You can make some good shapes. I think we should put another piece of wood in there now and try and make like a Christmas tree or something. is you can just quite easily get rid of all the mess. You can't do that with the big one. If you, for whatever reason, have to take it off the lathe and put it back on, especially between centers, it's never gonna line up to where it was. So when I put the tool on it now, this is not gonna be straight, if you get what I mean. The cut that I've done is now gonna be moving like that and it's gonna mm. be off center because you'll never get it back to where that was. Uh, unless you're using a chuck or something, that's why we, we use this. Got like a bolt so I can, I, I make the recess and then that's there forever and I can take it off and put it back on and it will be the same, apart from warping. But between two centers, I've just got to reshape it. We're, going, we're not going for quality, we're going for speed. <laughs> There we are. It's 
for sure. This is the worst thing I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> ripped some of it out because the pith ah uh, yeah because this is not very dry at all this was cut like six months ago oh, that tree over there sycamore that there is perfect to put a little hook in it it was an intentional oh, thing to draw. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually a good that's point that's exactly what I wanted all along there we are <clears throat> that's pretty nice isn't it it is yeah piece of shit ah but <laughs> It can stand. Is the screw out of it? Or are just going to leave that in there? Oh, yeah. Well, what do you think? It gives it some weight. It just take it. You can leave it in there. Take it. <laughs> there we are. Wow. It even stands I'll up. I'll put it in you know, thumbnail. Put it there. We could paint it. I could mean, we've not it. got time for that, but where should it go? If only a thumbnail could be a video. Or a gif. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that's the gif. All in all, as I expected, like the tools, they're awful, unusable, wouldn't even bother. Kindling. Yes. You can make this work, but it's such a faff. We had to do so many bodges and like, even just moving the slightest thing is a disaster every single time. The lowest speed was definitely fast enough, any faster than that, and it was just throwing the piece off. The tool rest is really thin and really way too far away. <sighs> See that the notch in this for the screw doesn't come any further, which means you can't push that any further forwards towards the wood. That's probably the biggest thing for me is because it means you're always like overextending and that just throws the tool out of the way. There's also just not a lot of things that I can think of to do in this scale, which means like you're less likely to use it. So I would have to recommend spending 10 times as much money <laughs> on this instead. Because this is kind of a waste of time, honestly. It's a bit of fun, and it's probably only fun if you already know what you're doing. If this is what you're trying to learn on, it's going to be hopeless and it's going to put you off the uh, hobby altogether, I think. Because it's just so annoying. But it was, for me, £25 well spent. <laughs> just because it was funny. Shipping included. Yeah, it's free plastic. Yeah. I also, I don't think you can change the chuck. It doesn't look like you can because I think that just is the axle. It's... What we could do is, like... Assemble it as a pillar drill. Oh sh and see these rails here? Yeah. That can go up and down. We could make a whole mechanism. Oh my god. So, a whole mechanism. I think it would be super useful. And you know Mick's strange carpentry machine with the, the knob thing yeah. that comes down? We'll find that wherever it is. That's gone. It's long gone. You know, some simple mechanics. Some simple yeah. <laughs> just, Simply. It just puts I, it down. Do you know what? I I don't think that this is gonna have anywhere near enough inertia. No, definitely not. I'm going to push something on and then just it's going to go through my hand. I think this is possibly the stupidest experiment we have ever done because it makes no sense. Practically. It makes so much sense. It makes literally no sense. Don't worry, I'm this... being safe. Oh my fucking god. What's the advantage here? See? Leave a comment about what we should what do with this. Have. But I like not having to hold a button. I just turn on the lathe and then I can just move my bit around and yeah, which this can do. In fact, can it? It only just clears it. <laughs> so it, it almost can't do that either. <laughs> what, what, what can this do? <laughs> very little apparently. Oh my God, that's going to come off. I got to go. Hold on, I just need to adjust it. I can, can you smell burning? I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> oh, sure. is it this down here? Is this thing on fire? Oh, could well be. License. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was that full power? That's the lowest power. Full power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. That's good, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> it's sand, oh, it actually is sanding the metal. Oh, sh so we can smell. Let me uh, take we can, it off. Well, we're, the... we're smelling aluminium. Aluminium. <laughs> Paper versus aluminium. There it is. 
Bruh. Bruh. Can you tell me about this? It's chop saw. How much was this? 150 pounds. Do you use the extraction? Not really. Because okay. it kind of, the bag just sprays it. it can be all sorts of angles mm -hmm. and all that stuff and, and that tilt as well. But any, if you're doing anything big, anything like bigger than that, you can't really use it. So I have to do it by hand with that faithful saw there that's very wow. blunt. Specifications uh, on this? Couldn't cut butter. Could it not? No, it could. Okay. But like when you've got to go through, and I do a lot of mainly large logs, this sort of scale, what I need to do generally is slice that entirely in half. And I do it with that hand saw and it takes hours. My number one like product that I make is so <laughs> I've got bags and bags of <laughs> all different grades. There's like spaghetti at the top, fine dust from sanding at the bottom, all sorts. Should we do this? And then, and then you still buy, you have a bag of bought stuff here. Yeah, that's for guinea pigs and stuff. Can't you use that for guinea pigs? If it's the stuff from sanding and that kind of all gets mixed together, then it becomes too fine and it's bad for their lungs. So I've heard. And then I also <laughs> tried putting it on the garden, but the wind just takes it over to the neighbor's house and plasters their windows in it. So we didn't do that either. 